So now we have our shadow and our AO rendered. And if we go ahead and close out the material, close out the light, and we're just back to our render menu over here. If you didn't have that, just close that out, and then we can take our, oops, take our render menu and just drag that white dot and dock it over here. And you see we have our render passes. So we have our shaded view, our depth view, shadow pass, AO pass, mask, which is the overall outline of the object, and then our floor. And then if we had rendered SSS, we could go ahead and have that as well. All you have to do is click on these, and that'll go ahead and save it as a PSD, so you can click on every single one of these and export it. And you can layer them in Photoshop. Another thing you can do is you go over here to Z Plugin, and we go here to ZBrush to Photoshop, you can just click on the Send to Photoshop button, and that'll, uh, depending on what you have selected over here, you're probably going to want to make sure you have AO and lights turned on. And again, if you had turned on that subsurface scattering, you could want to turn that on as well. If you want to mask out your individual subtools, turn on subtool ID, etc. Uh, if you want more information on this, click on this little ZBrush to Photoshop up here. That'll walk you through a little tutorial. And I think on the first page, it'll even send you to a little video over here you can watch. But long story short, ZBrush, Z plugin, ZBrush to Photoshop, click Send to Photoshop. It'll send all of those layers to Photoshop for you to composite. Or, like I said before, you can just click on these individually and then import them into Photoshop and layer them over each other. Now, you remember in the movie palette, we did store a key in here. So if I hit the right and left arrow key, that'll snap it back to our original camera view. But let's say I wanted to render this out at a very large image size. What I can do is right now, if I hit BPR, and I go to Texture, Grab Dock, that's going to grab my entire document. And you're going to see if I hover over this, it's going to capture a 1229 by 1040 pixel image. And that's because that's the size of my document. So if I go over here to my document and I drag that over to the left, you're going to see I have 1229 by 1040. So let's say I want to save a 2048 by 2048 image when I hit render. What I'll have to do is if I type in 2048 and then hit tab, you're going to see it automatically resizes to 1733. That's because I have proportional turned on. So I kept my original proportions, allowed me to increase my width, and then change the height automatically. If I want to make this square, I'm going to have to take PRO, turn that off, and then type in 2048 for the bottom, hit enter, hit resize, hit yes, that'll go ahead and resize my document. It kind of does something weird in here, it just kind of stretches uh, whatever you had in your document originally. Just hit Control N to clear your canvas, drag your object out, go into edit mode, you're going to see we have our object back, everything looks normal. If we hit BPR, you're going to see everything rendered fine. We can go up here to our texture, and then if we hit grab dock, you're going to see if we hover over this, we're now getting a 2048 by 2048, but you're going to see it's really tiny in the middle of this huge square. And I'm, I'm looking here, I'm like, well, I, I, I see it pretty big on my screen. What's happening is your document size is going way beyond the physical bounds of your object. What you have is the actual pixels of your document, but your document size is actually bigger than what you can see on your viewport. If you want to see your entire document, go to your document menu and click the zoom button and then zoom out. Um, it might be a little bit difficult to see because my document background is very similar to the uh, color of my surrounding area here. If I go to my document menu and I change this background here to a, um, let's go ahead and just click on the back and then just drag over here. Let's change that color a little bit just so you can see better uh, where the document bound is. So here's the bounding box of my document. This is the 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels. Now, if you ever want to see the actual pixels of your document, hit this actual button, and that'll zoom you in. Of course, you're not going to be able to see your whole uh, object in relation to your border. So I would go ahead and take the zoom and then click and drag and zoom out. And now when I position this object on my 2048, you're going to see it starts slowing down a little bit because this is fitting a lot of pixel information into a small area. So you're having to see all of these pixels on here. So that's actually another thing I should talk about. If I hit actual, and then uh, you're going to say, okay, this is the size of my object in relation to my viewport. But if I start going in here and I start sculpting, uh, you're wasting a lot of memory, keeping in memory a bunch of document information that isn't really relevant. So what I would do is go over here to document, turn on W size and hit new document, and that'll just give you a document size exactly the size of your viewport. So you're not wasting any memory rendering things outside the view. However, in this case, because we are rendering to a larger image, I am gonna go ahead and zoom out. So we're gonna eat the cost of performance just to get a nice render at a larger size. So I'm gonna go ahead and reposition this object right here. And again, we have live Boolean render turned on. 
And in the instance of this subtool right here, we have array mesh turned on for that. And in the instance of some of these subtools in here, we have dynamic, if we do shift D and D, that's under the geometry menu. Under dynamic, we can toggle dynamic on and off. So there's a lot of tricks happening to keep our file sizes down and not be less destructive in our workflow. But we are able to render all of those things all at once at a very large document size here. So we're running at a 2048 with shadows and our ambient occlusion. So we click out a document, go back into our render. And now if we hover over these, you're going to see our width of our shadow pass is 2048 by 2048. Again, if we want to do, we can just capture all this at once. We can just go to texture, grab doc again. I, this is just an example of one way to do this so I can just show you the uh, 2048 by 2048 picture size we're getting now. But of course, you want to export either from your render pass or again under Z plugin, ZBrush to Photoshop, just send all of these layers to Photoshop.